Hi, it's Mike Matthews. I have an exciting word for you today, and that is, you are God's poem. That's right, in Scripture it talks about you being God's poem, and I want to share that with you by taking you into the actual language that's used in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Now I'm going to do a little bit of backdrop here about what the word poem means. It means a thing that is made or created. It's a piece of writing, as many of you know, that partakes of the nature of both speech and song that is nearly always rhythmic, usually metaphoric, and often exhibits form, formal elements as a meter or rhyme and stands a structure. Many of us know that that's the case, but it's important because your life is that. It has a rhythm to it, and God created you exactly for that purpose. You see, you are God's poem. The actual word poem, where we get the word from, is the Greek word poema, poema. And poema means exactly what we discussed, what poem means. So in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, God's workmanship, or his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, before Mike Matthews was created or you were created, he foreordained the work that you would be doing. Now, that word, works or masterpiece, is the word poema. That word poema, then, we could say, Ephesians 2.10, For we are his poema in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his poem in Christ Jesus. That is a phenomenal thought, that he so much thought about you and I as individuals that he would create an individual poem about Mike Matthews, or in your case, you in what you do. But that means that you would have a rhythm or cadence or a highlight in your life, in the work that he foreordained you to be part of. That's exciting to me. But it also lets me look at other people who are working in their work life or their career and find out, are they walking out this poem that's been created about them? So then if a poem has these very elements that are listed here, it means our work life would also have the same elements to them. And now you can start measuring how well are you interacting with the very poem that God wrote about you? How well am I interacting with this very poem that he created about me? How do people observe me in the workplace or in my career or in the work that he's put before me to do? So remind yourself of these elements that are within a poem because guess what? You are God's poem designed uniquely by him. And so when we take a look at this a little bit further, Psalm 139 verse 16 says it a little bit more broad. It says, your eyes, God, saw my unformed body. All my days were written in your book and ordained for me. So it matches out with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It just says that at a broader scale that Mike Matthews has a book written about him by God himself that I might walk that out. Now, I believe every one of us have a book written about us, maybe multiple books, but definitely many chapters. But the problem is many of us are not opening that book or turning the chapters or the pages of the chapters, we could say. But we are the very book that he wrote about us. We walk it out, we live it out. Take it a step further. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. What kind of elements does a poem have? Well, it has a rhythm. It may sound like a song, or a psalm, as we talk about the book of Psalms, all about you and I, each of us individually. You see, God made no mistakes with us and how he designed us to walk out our life. So a poem means to make or create, and therefore in Genesis 1, and 27, God was careful in verse 26 to say, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. But in verse 27, it says, so God created mankind in his image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Remember, a poem is something you made and or created. God was sure to include that in the book of Genesis. You see, when he created us from the dust of the earth, he made us, that's the Hebrew word for make, means out of something that exists. But when he chose to use the word create, it was his own breath that was breathed into us. So he made us and he created us because we're that unique to him. 
and he made a poem about Mike Matthews. He made a poem about yourself. So God creates his own poetic justice, we could say. He was to make and create us in his image was his choosing. It was his choice, not mine. I can't make this stuff up. It's all within scripture. The good part is I get to walk out what's been written in scripture and that he validates about himself. Again, he made us from the dust of the earth and he created from his own breath. You are truly God's poem designed uniquely by him. Now, I wonder, are you walking out that poem in your work life? Can people hear the music coming from the work you do? Now, I've been blessed in so many different things in life, and I just want to share with other people. In my early days as a young man, my grandfather would say, Mike, how do you know what to do? I mean, before I ask you for something, you already know what I was asking for. I couldn't explain it as a young man. As the years went by, people would say, Mike, how is it you make things easier than your coworkers? Well, I, I probably didn't know it at that time neither, but eventually I started learning. When God creates you for a work, a workmanship, you are his masterpiece, you just naturally know. You flow with God because the poem or the book has already been written and you get the joy of walking it out. And that's when we say the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. But I wonder, are we in the right calling? Do you understand God's purpose for your life? Are you doing all the things that he asked you to do that have been written beforehand in your time? I want to share a story about a young man who graduated from Oral Roberts University just a few years ago, Nick Rotola. He's in New York City, but he's from Wichita, Kansas. And he is playing the music God created for him. He's living out the poem that God created for his life. He started the first web three gallery on Fifth Avenue in New York City. In that gallery, he's offering things such as NFTs, which you may not know. You go to his website and you'll find out what they mean. Metaverse, education. He's doing blockchain, crypto. He's doing all the great things that are known to the world, known as the digital world today, as an Oral Roberts University graduate. But listen to this story. Nick is using his profits to fund missions trips around the world. His father's a pastor in Wichita, Kansas. And he and his father have been burdened to help people go into other parts of the world and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so his poem that he was created for is being lived out on Fifth Avenue in New York City. Now, I believe this is true of every graduate of Oral Roberts University, that they have learned to hear the voice of God and began to walk out their very poem or the book that's been written about them. Why? Because they started with the simplicity. I want to hear God's voice. That's the mission of Oral Roberts University, to train up students to hear His voice. And the whole educational journey begins to train whole leaders for the whole world. And Nick is living out that story before our very eyes. I encourage you to go take a look at his website that's listed here, and you'll find out, man, I want my life to matter like that. I want to fund things other people can't fund yet. I want to do it in such a unique and creative way. But most of all, I want to be the very poem that God talks about. I want to live out the poetic justice in the kingdom of the living God. So that would be a challenge for all of us. When God hears you work and other people hear you work, does he hear a murmur or complaining? Or does he hear a cadence, a rhythm, that gets things done other people can't do. When you're in his calling, when you're living out the poem he created you to live out and work out, you will be a sweet sound to other people. You will produce things nobody else can produce. And it's throughout scripture. When people fulfilled their call, they did things other people could not do. I believe God's people are the very best people. They're the most creative people, the most ingenious people, when they're in the center of his will, listening to his voice, and walking out the poem that's been created about them.